beautiful day it is here in Texas, here at the San Jacinto Monument, where we're celebrating the 185th anniversary of the victorious battle led by our brother, Sam Houston. We've just enjoyed a, a ceremony by the uh, Sons of the Republic of Texas, and now the Masons of Texas will take over as we present a wreath and, and several uh, comments from lodge officers and very special dignitaries. And I wish everybody could be here because it is where we won our independence as a republic. I, I thank God for this opportunity, and I ask for his continued blessing upon the Freemasons of Texas and our great state. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, brethren. Welcome to the 185th celebration of the Battle of San Jacinto and the Grand Lodge of Texas participation. At this time, I want to call Brother Jack Benton to the podium to offer prayer. Be good to see a bunch of masons out here and it's a uh, it's a fine day to have this celebration for our heritage what a great day fellas it's just outstanding please join me most holy and gracious lord god our great architect of the universe the giver of all good gifts and graces as we gather here today to honor our fallen brothers that gave us the ultimate sacrifice for this great state of texas as we remember the Alamo, Goliad, and the Battle of San Jacinto, let us not forget the great contributions our fraternal organization has contributed to our great state. Let us remember our great statesmen that helped us write the great state of Texas law and their contribution to our educational system. Let us open our minds and hear the message from our Honorable Ken Curry, Grand Master Masons in Texas. We ask, this, ask that you be with each and every one of us as we take this message back to our lives. For it's in your holy name we pray. Amen. And now I want to call upon Right Worshipful Kaczynski to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance to the U.S. flag. Brethren, please join me in the pledge to our nation's flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now I invite Right Worshipful Eldon Harris to the podium to lead the Texas Pledge of Allegiance. Please join me in the pledge to our state flag. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state under God, one indivisible. Thank you, Brother Eldon. Everybody can please be seated. Again, we want to welcome everybody to this 185th celebration of the Battle of San Jacinto and explain just a little bit that the Grand Lodge of Texas, since 1936, has appeared here or appeared across the, across the way where we actually have a monument next to the battleship Texas that was placed there by the District 30 Masons back in 1936. So we've been coming here quite a long while to honor all of those who have sacrificed or fought in this in this great battle <clears throat> we'd like to offer special thanks to the <clears throat> sons of the republic of texas for inviting us to be here and take part in their their program especially uh chairman ron McInair, david ovilla the acting director andy smith texas historical commission Jerry Tubbs in the Texas Army, and John Hammond with Rolling Thunder. Now we're going to do what we always do at Masonic uh, meetings, and we're going to do a few introductions, beginning with uh, 
our district service teams. Guys, as I call your name, please rise and stand and, let, and please hold your applause to the end. Beginning with District Deputy Grandmaster at Large Kevin Binder, District Instructor Scott Leopold, 31C, District Deputy Grandmaster 30C, Frank Flores, District Deputy Grandmaster 30F, Robert Roundtree, District Instructor, District 108, Cody Cocker, District Deputy Grandmaster 30E, Mark Duby, District Deputy Grandmaster 30G, Edward Peebles, District Communications Officer 30H, Chris Sellers, District Deputy Grandmaster at Large, Alan Duncan, Dis District Communications Officer 30E, Philip McFarland, District Deputy Grandmaster, District 107, Hugh McNeil, District Communications Officer 31A, Dean Bryant, District Instructor 30D, Albert Pinto, District Instructor 30F, Albert Holloman, District Deputy Grandmaster 31C, Don Fountain, District Deputy Grandmaster at Large, Aaron Tuzinski, District Deputy Grandmaster, District 30A, Ronald Adams, District Deputy Grandmaster 21A, Sean Laird, District Deputy Grandmaster at Large, Les Bradshaw, District Deputy Grandmaster 31A, David Matsus, District Communications Officer 30C, Jack Vance, District Deputy Grandmaster at Large, Doug Hudson, District Deputy Grandmaster 30H, Eldon Harris. Please join me in giving these guys a good round of applause. <laughs> Next, we want to introduce <clears throat> Worshipful Dennis Delane Reader, Grand Tyler of the Grand Lodge of Texas. <laughs> Worshipful Chip Green, Grand Persuaven of the Grand Lodge of Texas. Myself, Gerald Harris, Grand Senior Deacon of the Grand Lodge of Texas. Right Worshipful William Rip Moore, Grand Orator of the Grand Lodge of Texas. Right Worshipful Bard Henderson, Grand Junior Warden of the Grand Lodge of Texas. And it is my special privilege to present our Grand Master, Ken Curry of the Most Worshipful Grand Lodge of Texas. Most forceful, sir, I think it's now time for you to uh, say your piece. You know, it is an honor to be here on this particular day that we honor the forebears of Texas. We look around us, what a beautiful day. I have some remarks, but first off, I want to yield the floor to the Black Warsaw Grand Junior Warden. Brother Bart, you're up. Good morning. What a beautiful day in Texas it is. What an honor it is to be here on these hallowed grounds. We welcome you to a very special place in a very special state. Every time I get close to this monument, I try to envision exactly what it looked like 185 years ago and what was going on in the lives and in the minds of the many brave men who risked their lives so that we could all be here today experiencing life at its best as Texans. As, te as Texas Masons, we pay extra attention to those Masons who participated with this victorious event under the leadership of our brother, Sam Houston. We owe so much to those heroes that fought on this field of honor for our Republic's independence. And I thank God and I ask God to continue to bless us all and the great state of Texas. Thank you for being here. You know, Bart didn't know he was going to do this until about five minutes ago. Let's give him another hand. <laughs> Here we look around us, and like I said before, we have such a beautiful day. We have such great brothers that are here. It just amazes me 
that you anticipate how many years it's been since this field was fall upon. And the values of those men back in those days, you know, they had tough existence. They were mostly farmers trying to scratch out a living for their families. Yeah, you know, they believed in education. That was one of the reasons why they petitioned and signed the Texas Declaration of Independence. They believe in hard work. They believe in being with their brothers and comradeship and acting as one. Those are the values of those men upon this field. But then again, you look at our fraternity today and you see those same values. You see how we value education with all the scholarships that we present. You see how we value the fact that we're all brothers, that we stand together, united, how we value the other things we do. And as our forefathers were so many years ago, all upon one level, so are we upon one level. We're all by the first names. Titles don't mean anything to us. We all belong together. I want to thank you for your participation in this event, and thank you again for you being here. And we'll see with the program at this time. It is now my distinct pleasure to introduce and offer the podium to our grand orator, Rip Moore. Thank you, worshipful brother. As Santa Ana sat in bondage after losing the Battle of San Jacinto, Sam Houston leaned over to him and asked if he'd like to hear a joke. Santa Ana was shocked but agreed. Sam Houston replied, Texas. Perplexed, Santa Ana said, I don't get it. To which General Houston replied, exactly. <laughs> I'm a sucker for a dad joke. What a great day it is to be a Texan. We are afforded the distinct privilege of coming together to celebrate one of the most decisive military victories in history. We had so many hardships along the way with the tragedies of Goliad and the Alamo, but on this day in 1836, we sent shockwaves across the planet and through time, making a clear statement of why you don't mess with Texas. I have read that Washington on the Brazos is where Texas became Texas. I would agree Texas was conceived there along those fertile banks of the mighty Brazos River, but I firmly believe she was born right here on this battleground. We talked the talk when we declared our independence on March 2nd, but on April 21st, we walked the walk. We put our proverbial money right where our mouth was. As bold a move as it was to declare our independence on paper with ink, it was not until we declared our independence on the battlefield with blood that we truly sealed our faith. It's no coincidence destiny chose this to be the final battlefield. It was perfect for forcing a fight. The two armies were practically camped right on top of each other. After Sam Houston had the bridge destroyed, retreat was no longer an option for either camp. Whether the opposing armies were aware, the die had been cast. And here on this patch of earth is where fate would reveal her decision to the Texians' quest for independence. General Houston was in no hurry to attack Santa Ana on that fateful day, but a good portion of Texians were ready to act with haste. No matter the reasoning for the indifference, the extra time it took for them to come to an agreement was allowing destiny to set the table for one of the most conclusive battles in military history. When the order to attack was finally given, it could not have been a more opportune time for the Texians. Many in the Mexican army were exhausted and rested after long hours of marching or standing guard. The twin sisters jolt, twin sister scream jolted them up right quick like, and after just one volley of cannon fire, the chaos ensued. The Texians could hold back no more and rage overcame them. They charged with such zeal and fervor, their foe was sent scrambling. In just 18 minutes, the superiority of Santa Ana's army was overrun and vanquished. In less time than it takes to watch our favorite sitcom, the ragtag Texian forces defeated an army of superior numbers and equipment. It all came down to this do or die battle. 
We lose and it was game over. No redos or second chances. Santa Ana was, had made very clear his intentions for dealing with combatants. But the Texians' unwavering commitment to their fallen comrades and their thirst for independence led them to fight with such intense veracity that no man in his right mind would want to oppose them. It is mystifying how a do or die situation can motivate people to perform in such ways that their actions become legend before it even becomes history. So many men and women were elevated to legendary status during the fight for our independence. We are indeed blessed to have what seems to be numberless heroes and larger than life stories to fill each generation's heart with Texas pride. But that also infers we as Texans have some big old boots to fill. People like Brother Juan Seguin set the bar quite high for us. Not only did Brother Seguin fight valiantly in the battle here at San Jacinto, he also left his mark on almost every major altercation in the revolution. I wouldn't be surprised if the old adage, he went the extra mile, was inspired by his life. Brother Seguin's story has always inspired me because of his inflexible fidelity to his trust. He was a person that stood for something and stood tall doing it. There were so many brave people and acts of courage I came across while researching this battle. It was fascinating exploring this engagement again. Many new pieces of the puzzle have been uncovered by the persistent investigation of historians. I wish I had additional time to touch on more of what I found. There are one man's actions that drew me in and I felt compared, compelled to share the story today. This man was Mirabu Bonaparte Lamar. Brother Mirabu Lamar's audacious courage undoubtedly entitles him to the moniker of legend. This man came into the battle a private and left a colonel. Even for those times, this was not a common practice. The fact he rose in rank so quickly caught my attention and put me on the scent of this extraordinary account of history. I had to know more about Brother Mirabu, how Mirabu, Brother Mirabu, earned the rank of colonel literally overnight. I searched for days only to find again and again literature stating the same information. Mirabu Lamar's quick actions saved the lives of Thomas Russ and Walter Lanes. His act of bravery brought him a salute from the Mexican army and earned him the rank of colonel. That was the extent of what I could find. Needless to, to say, the description only fueled my desire to know more. This guy, in the middle of a war, earned a salute from the enemy for his bravery. I was not even aware this was a thing. That had to be one daring act to earn that kind of respect from the opposition. A bit frustrated and running out of time, I contacted a good friend in Mason to see if he had any insight. In typical fashion, he knew right where to look. I have to share the account he sent word for word. This comes from the book, Texas, Her Resources and Her Public Men, published in 1858 by brother Jacob de Cordova. In the critical moment, he discovered General Russ cut off from retreat and fiercely beset by several of the Mexican cavalry. Not a moment was to be lost. The slightest hesitation or delay was death. Lamar rushed to the rescue, and by the vigor and activity of his charge, put the assailants to flight and saved the life of the general. By the vigor and activity of his charge. If I understand the way that reads, Brother Lamar came roaring onto the battlefield, hooping and hollering with such spine-chilling authority that it caused the enemy's composure to collapse in fear to overtake them. As if this one crazed man could single-handedly slay every last one of them, it must have seemed like Ares himself was charging onto the battlefield. This was undoubtedly one bad-to-the-bone battle cry the presidential poet was spewing that day. Following this Herculean act of bravery, the brass requested he take charge of the artillery, which he declined, and I quote, on the grounds that he was unwilling to step between the officers of that corps and the honors which they hoped to win that day, end quote. He was later asked to lead the cavalry again, but again declined for like reasons. General Rutz was able to persuade Lamar to join him as a close advisor. As he and Russ began to ride off, I quote, the cavalry called loudly for Lamar to return and assume command, which he refused to do, to do, which he refused to do. 
until the officers of the corps galloped up to him themselves and said that it was their wish as well as that of the men that he should command. I knew Brother Mirabu was a phenomenal man, but this guy was one for the ages. He did not hesitate in the face of certain death to rescue his comrades and did it in such an epic fashion the enemy was fearfully obedient and thoroughly impressed. Then when asked to assume command because of his acts of extraordinary valor, he wisely declined. Not once, twice, but thrice he refused the reins of power. It was def definitely not for lack of bravery or ability. It was not until the men and officers conveyed their unanimous consent would he accept the honor and rank of Colonel. What a magnificent treasure Mirabu Lamar is to our history. Honestly, we may not be able to fill the boots of someone like Mirabu Lamar, but we owe it to him to try. It is imperative that we continue to remember and honor these events and the people who made them possible and ensure their ideas remain in perpetuity. While the blood that was shed on this battlefield paid for our independence, it does not guarantee that it will remain. This magnificent monument that stands tall, the tallest actually, because this is Texas after all, with the Lone Star celestially adorning the top, should not only serve as a tribute to our great Texas heroes, but it should inspire us all. This beautiful piece of art pays homage to the power of justice and divine providence, and all that look upon it should be filled with hope and courage to fight for a better day. Few other states, or countries for that matter, have the robust and inspirational story history we have been given as Texans. The price for our beloved Texas and the history that was conferred unto us was extremely costly. Many, many good people gave their lives in the name of liberty, and it is imperative we continually honor their sacrifices. May the principles of freedoms in our forefathers' memory resonate throughout our land. May we ever remember that freedom is far from free. free. And, as, and we as a people cannot falter from our duties to preserve liberty. May we each honor the memory of those who fought for this beautiful place we call Texas by enjoying one another in our great state. I wanna thank each of you for being here today to honor this great moment in Texas history. It is a, it's so important that we remember from whence we came. It is a tremendous honor for me to play this small part on behalf of the Masons of Texas to honor the memory of those who fought and won our freedom. Thank you, Grand Master and my brethren all. I wanna close with a portion of what brother Thomas Russ a general in the Texian army wrote concerning the Battle of San Jacinto. It reads, Never in the annals of war was the interposition of divine providence signally displayed. Our unparalleled triumph is attributed not to superior force, but to the valor of our men and the sanctity of our cause. These brave men achieved a victory as glorious as any on the records of history and the happy consequence will be felt in Texas by 40 generations to come. Thank you and God bless Texas. You know, before we close, there's a few people that we need to recognize again, you know, from the Master Border Sector Association, uh, District 30, uh, Doug Hudson, your officer, thank y'all again for your hospitality and your work in this event. Let's give them a hand. To uh, Brother Craig Enderley, who's out there working to uh, broadcast this live across the state of Texas. Craig, thank you for your efforts. This event would not have been possible without the efforts of Brother Jim. You know, he's worked on this for the last year. I always had it done last year, but then we had the issue with the COVID. He's put in so many hours talking to people here at the monument, the other associations that have been involved in this. And Jim, I want to give you a, a, a enamel coin, a good coin from the Grand Lodge of Texas, and thank you for your efforts. So give him a hand. 
Now, Jim reminds me, I owe him about six dinners, and I'll try and cover up, catch up at some point in time, Jim. Again, I want to thank you. You know, it's the Masons of Texas, like you, to carry our fraternity forward. It's the Masons of Texas, like you, who remind us that we're all on the same level. Again, I want to thank you for your time here. Uh, and I appreciate all that you've done and will continue to do for our great return. That will have the benediction. At this, at this time, ladies and gentlemen, we want to call upon the Texas Army to salute the Masons who fought for Texas independence at the Battle of San Jacinto. Gentlemen, hello, primer captain, hold us ready. Now call upon for the Jack Vance to close in prayer. All right, brothers, bow your heads, please. Our Father, we lean heavily on our experience and knowledges of the past with gratitude to you. We live at this moment of the present, between the past and future. May we be strong enough and wise enough, not only to use what we have gained, but to plan and prepare bodily for tomorrow. We go forward in your name, as those who have preceded us have done. Help us to implement our dreams of expanded service, greater love, and more dedication to our spiritual concepts in our fraternity. We give thanks to the Sons of Texas Republic for keeping our heritage close to our hearts. Thank you for our for Honorable Ken, Kenneth Curry for his message and his officers of the great fraternity. fraternity. Father, we ask that you be with our sick and distress as you know who they are. Father, first responders and military personnel, be with each and every one of us as we travel back to our home. For it's in your holy name we pray. Amen. As many Masons today have came out and are part of this group, it is very, very important that we stay honor this and each year that we come before and remember the Masons that departed in this battle and remember our forefathers that 